Hi there, this is Jonathan Ross with another set of video tutorials. This time it's on HTML5 markup. What we're going to be doing in this set of tutorials is taking a design. This is actually a free um, open source template from, let's see, it's from opensourcetemplates.org. It's one called Environmental Brand. And it's a template you can download from them. Currently, it's in HTML4. And what we're going to do is design a page that is very similar to this, not exactly like it, but very similar to it, using HTML5 markup instead of HTML4 markup. Now, we're also going to be using some graphics and other things like that. So you might want to download the graphics that I've prepared prepared um, or use your own but that's something we'll cover in a later tutorial now what we're going to be talking about is HTML5 and if you're aware of what HTML5 is then you probably know that it's the new exciting thing that everybody's been talking about but there's a lot of stuff that we really need to look at about what's actually happening now HTML5 is actually a whole new set of standards rather than just one thing the very first thing that we have is the markup itself and the new HTML5 markup actually has a whole new set of tags which are much more semantically driven and we'll talk about what semantics is in just a second we also have new um, things such as offline and storage um, HTML5 application caches and databases local storage databases really cool device access connectivity um, multimedia audio and video right on the web um, page. We have the ability to use 3D and graphics and effects using SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, Canvas, WebGL, and, and 3D features in CSS3. We have performance and integration with web workers. And we have CSS3, which is a new specification for cascading style sheets, which allows a lot of cool features. Some of those features that we will look at later on in these tutorials. Now, when most people talk about HTML5, they're really talking about the trifecta of HTML5. And that's going to be HTML5 itself, the new markup, CSS3 and all of its new capabilities, such as rounded corners and drop shadows, and then JavaScript. And we really mean lots and lots of JavaScript. Um, in fact, jQuery seems to be the really common thing to use right now. But of course, there's other J JavaScript frameworks and APIs out there as well. So the very first thing is to look at the new tags and such that have been um, enabled in HTML5. Now this is a great tag reference page on W3Schools that allows us to see all the new tags basically and we can see which ones are new to HTML5 and also which of those have um, been deprecated or are not supported in HTML5. So some of these new tags are things like article and aside and canvas and let's see if I can find um, figure uh, header and there's one down here called nav and another one called footer up here somewhere there it is footer and these are very important tags that are used for the structure of our page now the question is really what is semantics now semantics if you know the word um, means the meaning of something it's the study of the meaning of language and the problem with semantics is that it is something that we have to interpret as a human um, and it means that one person might have a different idea than somebody else about what is logical markup of a page now what people have been doing for a long time has been using class and ID names in their CSS and what I mean is if we take a look at this page right here they have a good example of it you'll see typical HTML4 mark markup where we have div ID equals navbar div ID equals main header div ID equals container div class equals section and these particular classes and IDs have been used and somewhat standardized in fact this article right here on Tech Republic is about standardizing these names so that pretty much everybody would use it now these are not necessarily the names that have been used here's an article I found which I thought was great um, and this one is about common 
classes and IDs that are, are used in marks up, markup of pages from all these different developers, all these different URLs. For example, we have containers that go around things, and some people call them wrappers, some people call them containers, some people call them, uh, let's see, that's page, there's a good one, and main, and then here's the header. We have masthead and header and top and header and header and banner, but you'll notice that header comes around a lot. So that's one of the reasons that when they developed the new HTML5 semantics, they said, well, header is a good thing for us to call that. So they created a tag just for that. Here we have the main nav, and you'll see we have nav a few times, and that's a pretty common one, so that's actually what they called it. Here we have the left, which doesn't really have anything in particular, except here's where the navigation is on the left. Here's on the right where you'll see sidebar, 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 sidebar. And unfortunately, you would have thought that they would have called it sidebar, but they called it a side instead. Here we have content, but instead of calling it content, we call it a section. And then on the bottom, we have footer, which is pretty common. So taking a look, um, this is an article which kind of compares side by side a typical HTML4 structure with a typical HTML5 structure. And here's the differences. Here we have div id equals header, div id equals nav, then our article and section, and then sidebar and footer here. If we take this to HTML5, we actually call that header instead of div id equals header. We call it nav instead of div id equals nav. Then we have article and section here, sidebar and footer. Now sidebar once again is not valid. That is a side instead. To find another example of this, here is one that is correct. We have header, nav, where you open and close the header, open and close the nav. You find the aside here which is basically a sidebar. Then you have a section, and inside that section is an article. You end the section, and then underneath that is the footer. Another example of this might do it a little differently. Here the nav is inside the header, which is totally fine. Here we have a section with another section inside of it with two articles inside that section, and then an aside, and then the footer. Another example might have something slightly different. This one has nav that's not inside the header, and a side on the other side, a section on the inside with a header and an article and a footer. Now, the problem with the section and article tags, I think the header, nav, and a side and footer, we kind of understand the aside can be a little funky, but header and nav and footer seem to make sense for what they are. But how come we have header and footer inside of a section. Well, it's saying that you can actually have a header group inside of a section and a footer for that section. Some people say that you should have an article and then the header and the footer inside the article because they really pertain to the article. So that's kind of the problem with semantics. And that is that some people have a different opinion right now about what exactly is the best practice. Just like lots of different people Let's see if I can come back to the uh, naming conventions here. Lots of different people have had a difference of opinion for what the header section should be called, what the ID should be called, or the content area should be called. You know, everybody's content or everybody's markup is different, but HTML5 is trying to unify that so that search engines um, can be more efficient at finding out what's on the page. Now, one of the ways that the search engine does this is by doing, oh, let me go back to that one, it, it generates what's called an HTML5 outline or a page outline. In order to understand this, you kind of have to understand the outline algorithm, but it basically goes like this. If you don't have any other sections, then anytime you have H1, H2, and H3s, you'll find that these become sub-areas of something. So horses for sale, mares is an H2, and then H3s, and then here's riding a ring, a rosies, and then uh, Chelsea's fancy. And you'll see these actually are all sub areas of mares, which is sub-areas of horses for sale. Then later on, I have another H2, and that's stallions. So this right here is just without any of the new section and content. Well, if we change something, if we call that a section instead, 
and I'm going to go ahead and finish that section here and call this a new section underneath. Now I have two different sections. If I show the outline, you'll see that it's changed things somewhat. Because now the document itself is the original outline, and then we have these two areas, these two sections, separated from each other. And you'll see, although I start one with an H1 up here, and the other one starts with an H2, they're both considered at the same level because they're both the first heading after a section. So I know this might sound a little confusing when I'm describing it right now, but this is just something to cache in our memory um, for us to take a look at later on after we've coded our web page a little bit. So what we're going to do is go on with the next tutorial where we're going to start basically outlining the structure of this page in HTML5. So let's go on.